1904, 116 years ago, there would have been a building right here where I'm standing, a building that would change the course of Huntington Beach history. I'll tell you about it in just a minute. I'm Chris Epting. I'm a writer and a storyteller, the author of several books and many articles about Huntington Beach. And what I like best is uncovering history that you may not be familiar with. This is Hidden Huntington Beach. Nineteen oh four, Henry Huntington, the famous railway magnate and a group of investors, has purchased a little town called Pacific City, thus changing it right afterwards though to Huntington Beach. And right where I'm standing, he erected a train depot because after all he was gonna run his Pacific Electric Railway trains down here, the famous red cars, starting on July fourth, nineteen oh four. Before I tell you the rest of the story, let's learn a little bit more about that famous railway system. Clifford Prather knows a lot about trains, specifically a lot about the Pacific Electric Railway in Orange County. I was really happy that he decided to meet me in Huntington Beach to give me a little history lesson. Clifford, before anything, let's talk about where we're standing right now. We're down here on the beach between 19th and 20th Street. Yeah. And I mean, for years, there's been a lot of talk and debate about what these rails are here. Mm -hmm down along the beach. What's your take? You haven't seen them before today. No, this is the first time I've seen it. I, I always assumed the railroad was up along the bluff. Right, me too. But looking at it, the rail looks awfully narrow. It doesn't look... For Pacific it, Electric. For general railroads. You know, a real railroad with you know passenger cars and freight cars and locomotives. It looks almost like a rail that you'd find in an amusement park miniature railroad. So... It and, goes on. There's about three or four different sections of it approaching the pier. You know, I, I agree. It always struck me, you know, it's been sort of handed down here. The, the, the mythology on this rail is that it's Pacific Electric Red Car. Right. But it's never really made sense. And it's been identified as part of the line that was here. But you're right. It, well, the tracks weren't down here. They were up there along PCH. Yeah, that's where it seems like they should have been. And being in concrete, uh, unless this was a depot or a station area or a maintenance facility, mm -hmm. they wouldn't bury their rails in concrete. Right, and, right. And in fact, this line mostly, they use sand and dirt for ballast instead of rock. So this is, uh, this is hidden Huntington Beach, literally. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we need to kind of maybe come back and figure out what this is. But beyond that, um, you actually got to ride the Pacific Electric A Railroad. few times. Well, when I rode the train from Long Beach to Los Angeles, uh, it was a, a big car that was uh, had different sound sounds. It didn't have an engine or a locomotive sound. It had uh, ele you know the electric motors and air compressors and. You know, and then there were the bell and the whistle that they had, the unique specific electric whistle. And uh, it, would, it was just a, a whole different experience than anything else. It wasn't like riding a bus or a dry, riding in a car or anything. In 1904, Henry Huntington, he and his group purchased Pacific City. It becomes Huntington Beach. Right. He's formed the Pacific Electric Railway a couple of years before runs the trains down here starting 4th of July, 1904. There's a huge celebration. Thousands of people come down. Talk about how that changes Huntington Beach. Well, it doesn't change, but it actually gives rise to Huntington Beach well, initially, right? Well, Huntington Beach has access to the larger Los Angeles area. So people could come down for the day on the train and spend the day in Huntington Beach. And instead of going to the west uh, side beaches that were real popular, or Long Beach, you know, uh, there were electric railways to all these places like that so you could come down here for the day or if you could live here and you could commute into Los Angeles which a lot of people did right yeah, so you could have the advantage of living by the coast a lot of people didn't have cars transportation for uh, freight and express was wagons and you know that really made it better you got uh, freight service to bring in all your materials you needed it made uh, living in Huntington Beach accessible to the rest of the world what gets me is when you see the images of the trains so close to the shoreline. How did that work logistically? How did those tracks not get washed out? They did. Okay, so talk a little bit of the perils of building that close to the water. Okay, you had the sand was one factor. You get some of these sandstorms, and they, their stories that uh, on between here and Newport, especially when the original railroad that threw Huntington Beach, the Santa Ana Newport was built, they would get 
massive amount of sand on the track and they'd have to bring out crews of workers to shovel the sand off the track so they could run. Or they would end up derailing cars because they raised the wheels up out of the, over the rails. What about flooding? It was lots of problems. There were washouts during high tides, you know, rain storms would uh, wash out the tracks. And the sand would also cause conductivity problems for the electrical power. And they had to use an actual trolley wheel on this line because the sand and the moisture, they couldn't use their, uh, what the other devices they used on their trolley poles. But in 1950, they stopped running basically, right? The, the, yeah, passenger service ended finally, uh, the rail service ended in 1950, uh, June 30th. Well, what would, in general, 1920s, 1930s, what would it have cost, say, round trip from Huntington Beach to Los Angeles? Ooh, that's hard to say. I, I know that in, uh, in the 60s, to ride the Santa Fe from Santa Ana to Los Angeles was a dollar, mm -hmm. and 90 cent, a dollar, dollar 80 round trip. So yeah, it probably wasn't that much more or less, it was probably less, and they, they were regulated completely. They, ha they couldn't arbitrarily set their fares up or down. They had to go to the uh, regulatory agencies to get permission to charge certain amounts, and they were all on record and set. We did, we went out earlier and shot some aerial footage of a lot of the rights of way that still exist in Huntington Beach. Talk about those a little bit. I don't think a lot of people realize that the actual, there are green belts where the, where the tracks used to yeah. sit that can't really be developed on, right, for a long time. Well, it, it's just, it's, I think the problem is it's, it's, it's a narrow piece of land. And uh, for whatever reason, whether they have trouble trying to sell it to people, a lot of times what they'll do with an abandoned railroad, that the railroad owns something and they want to get rid of the property, is they'll sell it to adjacent property owners and they'll move their property into the, where the railroad used mm -hmm. to be. But uh, there may be some other reason, pipelines, or uh, they used to put a lot of utilities along the railroad lines. So, Do you but, ever go wander those rights of way today? Do you find it interesting to oh sort yeah. of retrace? It, it, it's always interesting looking for the, the traces of the lines, you know. What do you find you know, usually when you go looking like oh, that? Oh, you, you, sometimes in areas you'll find a building that is curved because the tracks curved around to get into a warehouse or, a, or around the buildings. Uh, you might find on the streets uh, what they call track cracks, where they pull the rails out, but they didn't repave the whole road, and you'll end up with having, or they'll just pave over the rails, and you'll see cracks in the line that above the rails. What's fun today is you follow along Alabama and Lake today. You can see a lot of Greenbelt. When you go out to retrace the La Bolsa line, you can see where the uh, right of way connects with track that still, once you cross Ellis, there's still track there because there's still trains there moving lumber in, right? Oh, Things and there's, like even that. A, there's even a bridge over the street that they built and there's no tracks on it anymore. But so, that was the train bridge. Yeah, that was it. They used to come as, when they abandoned from the depot and at Lake, they went as far as Main Street. And then they abandoned back up to where they are now at the lumber yard. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I think it's fun for people to wander and once you once you realize where the rights of way are, it really gives you a sense of what it was like, what the train mapping system was like here oh, yeah. for all those years. Do you still wish the red cars were around today? Do you wish they had kept the system? You know, it'd been nice to have. And you know, we're getting a little bit of it back now with the, the light rail projects they're building. Uh, but you know, there's always been the conspiracy theory that, you know, the General Motors and uh, Firestone Tire and Standard Oil conspired to kill the Do Pacific you buy Island. into that? No, not really. I mean, it's to their interest to sell buses that ran on diesel and use rubber tires. But the Pacific Electric was expensive to run. They were losing money calling people. Uh, the equipment was getting old. The, you know, most of the equipment was getting to be 40, 50 years old. and. Uh, it was relatively slow. The routes were being impacted by lots of traffic and cars, so they couldn't compete. And people were changing their what they wanted. They wanted a car where they could go to town when they wanted to, come right. back. Their and, own schedule. And their own schedule. So, I mean, they were losing passenger business. The cost of re rebuilding the system after 50 years of service is prohibitive on a, on a business that wasn't making money anyway. And you know, it wasn't the most luxurious in, in most ways. Well, you know, it's kind of a nostalgic feel about it, but, you know, the cars rattled and, you know, you had to step up into it and uh, stand out in the middle of the street. Right. And there, there were a lot of things that, 
people forget about. It was nice, they had a great system and went places, but people weren't uh, supporting it. I want to thank you very much, Clifford, for all your information. To our viewers, if you're interested, it's possible today to wander Orange County and find real trace elements of the Pacific Electric Railway. There are rights of way that have plaques and markers. I'm going to show you a few of those right now. And uh, again, Clifford, thank you. All you right. got to come back sometime. We got to figure out our tracks. Yeah, here. we'll get some maps or aerial views, and we'll follow this. Find up, out okay? what was here in the in in the 40s and 50s. I'll be back to close in just a minute. There may not be a lot left in Huntington Beach as far as red car remnants, but throughout Orange County, there are some wonderful places to get a sense of where the tracks once ran. In Buena Park, Cypress, Anaheim, Stanton, the county has done a terrific job of placing historic markers and preserving many of the footprints of the actual track. In Santa Ana, there's even an original Pacific Electric substation that today is a historic landmark. It's a great way to start to get a sense of how things were decades ago when Orange County had a fully functioning railway system. By the way, in Seal Beach, there's an actual red car on display and it still sits on an original piece of track. Today, it's a historical museum. If you'd like more information about exact locations to these interesting sites, just shoot me an email. It's a fun day traveling throughout the county to experience the past. So there you have it, some great places to wander the county to learn more about the Great Pacific Electric Railway. Those are really some fun trace elements you can go discover. In the meantime, if you want to follow more about the hidden history of Huntington Beach, we have a growing Facebook page which is called simply Hidden Huntington Beach. Join it, become a member. There are great stories and photos and all kinds of things being added every day. In the meantime, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you next episode.